So with this video, we're going to be reviewing some of the things that the new Vidoc showed in from Bungie. They, if you guys don't know, they showed a Vidoc. I'll sh leave a link down below where you guys can see the original video. But we're going to see a few things that uh, I noticed and I'm more curious about. I'm not going to try to be negative because most of the video actually is pretty cool. I think it's really cool, especially like when they talk about like where they where they're going with the game and whatnot. So this is actually going to be live. You're going to hear my clicks. You're going to hear my types. You're going to hear my thoughts and everything. So uh, apologies if this isn't super professional, even though none of my videos really are. <laughs> I'm sorry, but these are just a, some thoughts of a Destiny fan actually a destiny fan since destiny one so yeah enjoy uh, hopefully my opinion has a little bit of weight considering i've been here since beta of destiny one so if i do sound a little negative i do apologize but that's coming out of a place from concern because i really do love this game i love this game's lore i love this game's just everything really so when i'm I get negative or I get mad, it's because I'm worried that this game's not doing well enough where it can continue. I don't want this game to fail because at the end of the day, this game is the game that I found a lot of my best friends. I, I found a lot of my best memories uh, in gaming. So for me, this game means a lot and I'm not alone. Most of my friends, most of the Destiny community feel this way. So when next time you kind of like see me getting mad instead of typing or just being hater or anything just think like this guy's been playing destiny since destiny one beta and he's been through it th through thick and thin i've bought all the dlcs i've bought all the collector's editions or almost all of them i don't think i'm gonna get shadow keep but not because i don't want to but because they're out but i've been th with destiny through hard times and good times so yeah that that's how i feel so let's see what the vidoc says i have a few notes from this because i've already seen it but i kind of want to go through it while you guys are watching it with me so let's begin this video year three is the beginning of us really looking at destiny from its heart out we want to build Destiny for its core fans. We want to make sure that we're building it for the people who love it. It's trying to make sure that players feel like they're on this journey with us, rather than us dictating what they're experiencing. Sometimes you feel like the events of the world happen, and sometimes you feel like you make the events of the world happen. That makes me every day go, what's the best version of Destiny we can put in front of players? The real thing I think we're doing this year is telling our players where we're going. Like, we're saying, hey, we're back. This is the five-year vision for the game. I'm gonna stop the video right there. So immediately they say they have a five-year plan for the game, which is pretty wild, all things considered, because we had no idea. So I think it's really cool. I think it's really cool that they have a five-year plan, especially since more in the video, you'll get to notice that like, uh, there's no there's no mention of Destiny 3, so I have a lot of thoughts on that, but let's just continue on to the video. A lot of what we're doing this year is to set Destiny into a place where Destiny can begin its next major change. What we want to construct is a world where players feel like their actions, whether personal or as an overall global community, are moving the universe forward in some meaningful way. So the vision for the game is awesome action MMO in a single evolving world that you and your friends can play anywhere. Vision for Destiny 2 is an awesome action MMO in a single evolving world that you and your friends can play anywhere. I think that's really cool. I think, I think th this is a small thing to be really happy about, but when I first started playing Destiny, the immediate thought I had was this is like an MMORPG. Especially Destiny 1, considering you could choose how your guardian was, like, your super wise. So, I always found it irritating when they never said, oh, we're an MMO. So, 
I know it's a small thing, but it's really... I really appreciate that they're calling themselves an MMO now because it literally feels like they're trying to become more in sync with the with the fan base especially when you see the whole Vidoc it's just kind of like more like really good things more than negative if I can really think about it because I'm looking at my notes right now so I think I know it's a small thing to be really happy about but at the same time it's just really I, I like I, I the word escapes me it just makes me really happy that he says that it's an MMO so that's just li literally a small thing but yeah Shadowkeep is this first step to where we want to get to. Eris is going to make a discovery, and the discovery she makes is really important to where Destiny's going. Before us lies a dark remnant of their existence. Players are going to be called back to the moon, a place that they're very familiar with if they were players in Destiny 1, but they're going to find that it's been chained. And part of the game is understanding what changed it, and what has Eris discovered here? And what does it mean for the world, not just in the context of right now, but what does it mean for the game in March? And what does it mean for the game a year out? You're all insufferable! Save your torment for someone who gives a damn! You're gonna discover that you're plagued by these nightmares. Nightmares are manifestations of trauma of guardians who have come back to the moon. They even go further and become enemies that are from the past, that are now real again. Shadowkeep is not just a destination with a new set of missions on it. Shadowkeep is a transition for the entire solar system of how you play the entire game. Build crafting choices, deeper RPG chase, like more team play. One of the first things we set out to do with Shadowkeep was deepen the character sheet. He was implementing some of the feedback he got from Sheet. That led to all the changes that we made to Armor. Armor 2.0 is really all about making every slot on your character sheet have an impact. Stats are back, there's like more stats than ever. We overhaul the mod economy. There's gonna be a bunch of you know mods that you can get for your finishers. There's a whole new crop of weapons that are coming out. There's new seasonal weapons to earn. There's the new Shadow Keep, Astro Shaman -y weapons. Kind of like old school magic y, like imbued with dark powers. So, deepening character sheet, which in my mind, immediately I think about like more custom supers, more stats, more mod and armor and weapon choice with flexibility. I think the new system that they're bringing in is going to be really interesting, especially if they let us come like customizers for supers which is what we've all been wanting for we, we really want to just go back to destiny one where our super was just like dots in a fucking screen and we could pick whatever we wanted because ultimately that choice was so refreshing compared to now where it's just like which tree do you want bottom top or mid so i, I just wanted to interject a little of that not only that but I don't know if I missed this, but nightmares are manifestations of trauma of guardians who came or who come back to the moon. They even go far, far further and become enemies that are from the past that are now real again. Whatever the fuck that means. It's funny though, because when I think of that, I think of just like, they're just making fun of Activision. Like, oh yeah, those are the, our evil past, like kind of like our evil, like this is what happened before when we were Activision, but now shit's gonna get better. So hopefully it'll get better, but let's go on. To it. Are you fending for yourself? Garrus is not trying to protect you. So the weapons just like, they're guiding you through the experience and they're telling you when the nightmares are around. We actually have it set up that when you're near the nightmares, like they have a bit of this like, almost like you can see through them or there's some glowing inside. So I think it's really cool that our weapons will actually show us when nightmares come they'll literally manifest like the the charms around our guns will literally start glowing red i think that's awesome especially like if they just randomly appear because if i'm just walking around like and i hit a corner and my gun starts changing color i'm gonna be like oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck what's what's gonna what's happening that 
moment of oh fuck oh fuck is gonna be really cool especially if we can get to that point where like can you imagine nightmares coming into like pinnacle activities that would be scary like ooh, that would be dope don't get me wrong i'd be like me and my friends would literally like the harder something is the more fun it becomes because once me and my friends start doing it and one of us goes oh shit my weapons are going it we'll be like oh fuck mine too oh fuck oh no 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 where, where, where's it coming from and then like we're about to go to a boss fight like it, it's a small thing but it the ramifications of us having something that can tell us yo baddies coming really really bad bad guys coming inbound in like whatever time it just adds more like tension and more like oh fuck like that I love that. I really love this. This is one of the weapons that Victor is making. It's a rocket launcher, fires out seeker projectiles. So, should be fun. You're gonna learn a bunch of cool stuff about Eris and this nightmare problem around the solar system, but you're gonna build a bunch of cool rewards. And then, you know, if you don't get roles that you like, you're gonna go back to the rune table and you're gonna make more. And that's part of being a Shadowkeep player. So, the rune table, it's interesting that he says rune table, not interesting the rune table in itself in of itself, but it's interesting that he says that we're going to be able to go back to the rune table and essentially build whatever we want. From what I gather, this kind of sounds like the king's court to me at least. Kind of like, "Oh, you didn't like this weapon roll? All right, cool. Throw the gun in there and then do a whole new run of whatever." And then come back and you'll get a new role depending on like what level of you of well, the one you do maybe you get better role better chance for a role like if we can choose which role we want and then we have a certain percentage of it coming into it that would be really cool i know like i'm just like throwing ideas out there but at this point there's like two weeks left i'm allowed to dream right now <laughs> Not only that, but a mechanism of the occult built by Eris Morn to harness even the most unstable of magics, access the lantern to create gear using nightmare essences, and collect bounties. This is what the description of Lectern of Enchantment says. So, I'm really excited about this because in Destiny 2 uh, Taken King, the expansion, we had the King's Court, which essentially was basically we would put in a rune, if I remember correctly, and we would fight, and then at the end we would get rewards. And it wasn't perfect by any means, but it was fun, and it was stuff that we could just keep doing, 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 and getting more gear along the way. So for me, I loved it. I, I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. So if I get more of that, then I'm not gonna complain. It's building your character your way. Try to like separate that like sort of ramp up cinematic like story climax beat moment from the. Each year we have an expansion set that comes out like Shadowkeep, and we're gonna have four follow-on seasons. And the expansions themselves are are like meant to be an anchor that is gonna set that arc in a place. That growth, evolution, change—that's the stuff that manifests in the seasons. So we evolve the season pass. So. This is where I'm gonna end the video. This is gonna be part one of this video. Part two is gonna be the the ha the next half of this video. But the one thing I wanna end on is I really like the idea that the expansion pass is gonna be the anchor and the seasons beyond that are supposed to follow that story. So instead of going through Forsaken, then finishing that story, going to the season of the Forge with a new story, it'll actually connect Forsaken and then progress the story of Forsaken using that as an example obviously but it's gonna be really cool to see Forsaken's story and then continuing that story for three more seasons especially if it can become more of a like a really good story a telling of a story that will finish within th three seasons and an expansion so I can already see like basically it being like kind of like little movies where in the first half, we find out that Savathun's taken all the nightmares and turned them against us. And then in the next season, we're gonna have to f help. Like, we're gonna have to help the Cabal with some of the nightmares that are attacking them, and then slowly but surely get them to join us and help us beat the night the nightmares. And then at the last DLC, 
will get the fallen to help us with killing the the nightmares and ultimately killing Sabathun while gaining the cabal and fallen i know i'm this is like whoa this has a lot to ask for but if we can get that quality of storytelling from an expansion and then three more seasons how could i not say yes to that type of like expansion the only thing that bugs me is that they're really going hard on fomo and for better or for worse i don't like fomo but i understand why they're doing it so am i still gonna be playing the game obviously but now it's just gonna feel more like a, a like a video like a job it's gonna feel more like a job where like right now i don't feel guilty about playing borderlands 3 because destiny i'm done with destiny there's nothing to grind for at least for right now i mean i can go for like certain guns certain builds certain stuff but ultimately shadow keeps coming out which is going to change a lot so i don't feel that grind but when shadow keep comes out and then the next, the next seasons start coming out i don't like the idea that i'll be playing other games and i'll feel guilty because oh man i need to make more progress on my seasonal artifact or my my battle pass or my this or my that that guilt of playing another game that's ultimately what's going to start making me hate destiny more and more that fact that i can't play another game because i need to play this game so that's just one negative from this really cool thing that i got so if you guys liked the video let me know in the comments below i will see you guys later in the second part of this don't forget to follow me on my social media outlets. Or links are in the description below. Don't forget to like and follow and subscribe. And I will see you guys later.